All right, guys, this is the pattern for the depth stop of a Stanley number 78. And let me tell you what, this is a fussy pattern right here. Let's go have a look. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. All right, this is the project I've been working on here for the last couple of days. Uh, this is the uh, depth stop for a Stanley 78. And there's also several other Stanley planes, and I'll, I'll have to find the numbers of all these. Um, but these things, you know, somebody takes them off the plane, tosses them in a drawer, and then, you know, at the estate sale when the guy passes away, that gets lost and separated from the part or from the tool. So you end up losing a lot of these things over the years. Or, you know, it's cast iron, could get dropped on the floor and get broken too. Uh, so there's a lot more planes than there are, you know, the depth stop. Uh, same thing with the fence, too, and I'll, I'll show you the fence here in a second. But anyway, uh, old Sneelock, he let me borrow this. This is off of one of his planes. Uh, he has identical one to mine, and he needs some more of these. And I thought, well, if I can borrow it, I could probably make this one into the pattern. But then, you know, when I got the part, I thought, well, maybe I should try to build a wooden one. So this is the wooden pattern, and here it is. Let's see if we can get nice and close so you can see all the detail. But it's kind of a little notch, and that's that's relief for the thumb screw that goes through the hole. And on the back, if we can get the light just right. You can see there's it's kind of almost like V ways. Well, there's a couple of little V's, and that rides in a groove on the plane. So let me show you the plane. Got it right here. So you'll note, this is a Stanley, the groove is on this side, and he also has, um, I believe it's a Sargent, uh, but maybe it was sold through Sears. So on this one here, it's probably kind of hard to see, or you can kind of see it. The V on this side is still there, and it's a pretty round V. It's not very well defined. The one on this side, it's been kind of ground away. It's a little bit flatter. And probably it was cast that way. But it's just to keep it off of this uh, this knicker here so it doesn't bind up on it. Anyway, that, that just keeps this thing from twisting while it's in there. Now, special note, this hole, I believe he said that's like a number 1027 thread, so that's kind of screwy, right? Uh, but apparently these things were made before, um, you know, people were using standardized threads. So probably Stanley didn't want you to buy their screw and use it on somebody else's plane. They wanted you to buy, buy their equipment. Uh, there's been a lot of businesses do that over the years. Let's see. I don't want to stand that way, does it? Of course not. All right. I'll just lay it over. So anyway, what I did... I took it and I just set this thing on my paper here and I just traced it around it, you know, nothing super fancy. And then I started measuring everything and I drew in all the dimensions here as best I can. Some of these things are kind of a little hard to measure, like the, the width of that slot. It's round on both ends. It's kind of sitting in a recess, but it's approximately an inch. I think I did fairly well here. Um, anyway. Uh, I plan to make up the whole pile of these probably because I don't think this is going to cost me too much to get cast. And then uh, there's very little machining, really the only surface, there's only two critical things really on this whole thing. I guess three. This V and that slot, the distance away from it needs to be fairly close. The screw has a, there, I mean, there's a lot of play on that. So, you know, it's not super high precision. But the bottom of this foot probably should be pretty pretty square to that, too. And again, uh, you know, we don't need to be into seconds of angles here, I think, on that. So probably a guy could mill up a jig to just screw this to and run it across as a I don't know, surface grinder would be the way to go, really. But probably a milling machine and then just lap it on some paper. That would probably work just fine. A belt sander might probably get you pretty close, too. Uh, I kind of prefer to maybe hold myself to a little bit higher standards than belt sander machining. 
But uh, anyway, this, is, this has been keeping me busy here for a couple of days. So uh, really the only thing left to do on this is to spray some lacquer on there. And um, I'm debating about, you know, I wanted to build, you know, s several patterns so that I can cast multiple, multiple castings at one time. And let me tell you what, this thing is not very big, but that's a lot of fussy little stuff. Like uh, all these V's and everything. There's a piece. This is kind of tenoned in to this. And this stuff is all tiny little parts. Look at all the little radiuses and everything on here. And most of that was kind of like sanded. You know, I got it pretty close with, you know, plain, you know, I used everything was hand tools here, but uh, like a dowel with some sandpaper and trying to sand it to get these things to flow just right into that. Cause that's the way the original is very little filler. I kind of had to put a little bit here, a piece chipped out on the back, but this is uh, very non-critical surfaces, but I finished them off. So at least they're flat. Anyway, it's a very fussy pattern to build actually. So, um, I might maybe make a video trying to make duplicates of this. So if I get it sealed up really good, uh, perhaps I could, uh, make a silicone mold casting of this part and then, uh, pour some kind of a resin maybe or something into that mold. And then I could make as many of those as I wanted. And then I could send that up to the foundry, uh, for the castings that, that would, that would be called uh, doing like a, a production pattern. This would be the master. And then all those other ones that I will make would be a production pattern. If, if the production patterns get damaged and certainly they're gonna, that's just the nature of the beast, uh, you know, they don't last forever. They're, they're in there hammering away on sand and stuff and these guys got to get it done. So every once in a while something gets messed up anyway. So, but I would always have this master pattern that I could make more production patterns and pretty much we could go on forever making this part. All right, guys. So if uh, anybody needs one of these, make sure to let me know. I'm going to be uh, casting up quite a few of these things. And, uh, you know, if I can get a bunch of sales on this, that'll, that'll go a long way towards uh, kind of keeping the lighting on around here and uh, allowing me to put out more content for you guys. Anyway, why don't you click on the old uh, horizontal mill icon over here and uh, check out the videos that are coming up below and make sure to go check out the bison workshop i'll put a link link over here on the side too